It's very exciting to have you here. <laughs> did you make your matcha? I did. I've got did it ready. Taste it yet? I haven't tasted. No, I haven't. I'm, I'm. I'm holding my breath. I haven't tasted I'm... mine either yet today, and I'm actually kind of nervous about mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Uh, let's get. Let's get started. It's podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest. She's a streamer, host, frequent flyer, and avid Degrassi fan. Just Sam. Hello, Sam. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, what is uh, what is, what is today's drink? What is what are we having this morning? So this morning I have made a matcha. Oh, yours is so much greener than mine. Oh, what's wrong with yours? I don't. I maybe I've not done enough. Mine's kind of like quite pale. Oh, maybe you just needed more matcha. I mean, I've got the. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the a little bit keto matcha. The... the keto matcha. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite matcha there is. Mm, <laughs> From yeah. genuine tea. I just got paid a small amount of money there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's actually I, my favorite as well. That's what I'm using in, in my uh, matcha. And doesn't it look delightful? You just have to add a little bit more than Miles. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Like, done. See, I don't, I kind of, I don't want to just like free pour it from the thing because I feel like I'm going to get like an entire bucket of, of matcha in here. Oh, you might. <laughs> Do what uh, I say. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to choose. I'm, yeah, I know. I'm going to try it as, as is. So, so can you, so this is a matcha. What, what else have we got in this, in this iced matcha? So ice, you'd already called it. Oh my Obviously, gosh, yes. Spoilers, geez. Ugh. Sorry. So <laughs> there's ice. Uh, there's a, some water, but that's because I uh, melt my matcha in hot water first, and then I froth it in there, um, and then I put ice in my cup, put some milk in it. I use coconut milk, and then I pour the warm matcha over that, and then I do just a little bit of um vanilla. Simple syrup. I was about to say extract. I was like, wait, no, don't do extract. That's no, disgusting. no, don't do extract. No, no, no. And did you, did you do the? Do you have like the little, the little bamboo frother. whisk? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah I did that so too. It's great. All right, cheers. Let's ready? let's see how All this right, tastes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mine's good. Mine <laughs> just tastes like nothing. Mine just tastes like milk. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do it. Let's say you might try need more matcha and. Oh, but I haven't syrup. whisked it now. I haven't whisked it. Does it taste like vanilla milk at least? Yeah, I mean, I can taste the vanilla. This is going to be so powdery now, though. <laughs> <sighs> All right. There's now a heaping pile of... I'm just going to... Hygiene! I'm just going to do this. <laughs> I'm just going to mix it with my finger. So, you know, how does that product feel on your finger, Miles? You know, you know genuine's, Genuine Tea's Keto Matcha is one of the finest feeling matchas against my finger that I've ever had. Yeah, out of all of the matchas I would do this every. I, your finger. Who needs the bamboo whisk when it feels so silky against your skin? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's going to be moisturizing. Did you know that matcha is good for collagen? You so know, you're going to have, have one plumpy finger. I... <laughs> Wouldn't Sorry, be the wait, first time. On. Let's be honest. I don't think I like this. Not <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I did know that because I have green tea in my face wash. <gasps> Same. I actually yeah. have a like a matcha powder scrub that I use. Oh, for exfoliating. Yeah, that's good. Is this is this like your your go to drink? Like, wh why is this your go to drink? Um, I drink a lot of different caffeines, but mm -hmm. in particular, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to share this, but I'm going to do it. It's Saturday for us right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and <laughs> just to reveal it. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> but we only record on Monday, Sam. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, but it's Saturday morning, and Saturday I'm not really working. So, mm -hmm. I don't want a lot of caffeine, and matcha doesn't have as much. So mm -hmm. it's just not nicer, yeah. Than like getting yeah. jittery coffees and sports drinks. <laughs> yeah. And do you have like a brand that you go for that isn't genuine matcha? That is an inferior matcha. Oh yeah, the inferior <laughs> matcha that I no longer use because I use the same one as mine. <laughs> uh, it's actually from Chamberlain Coffee. So okay. Yeah. So Emma Chamberlain. I haven't heard of that. She is a YouTuber. Um, oh. who just kind of like branched out 
out of YouTube and now does modeling and all these kinds of things. But she mm -hmm. was a big coffee person, so she made a coffee brand. Um, and See, then that's where she I need to go. Matcha, and I was like, sick. I love yeah. matcha. That's where I need to go. I need to. I need to be. I need to be branching out and getting my own coffee brand. You should. Or comf, comf, coffee ambassadorship or whatever. So if what you were, you, if you made your own coffee brand, what would you call it? Would you make it something? <sighs> my oh, the zaddy. The zaddy. Well, this is the podcast of a generation, so I feel like I need to get, keep with the brand and call it like the grind of a generation or something. But then that might be taken in wrong context. I don't know. I, I, mm, I, I look see, forward we, to we your. We kind of already have like a grinder, so. Mm. Mm. They might, Roast they might of a generation in. that could work. Roast of a generation. I don't know. The don't next know. generation. I look forward well, to your fan fiction. Thing. The next generation is also a Star Trek. Thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get sued by Degrassi and Star Trek oh, no, for one brand Drake. of coffee. <laughs> Drake's after me. Run. <laughs> he, he's moved out of Toronto. He just left. Was he still there? I thought he was like mm -hmm. Big Holly. No, no, he lived in Toronto. He's just he's just moved to LA now, I think, proper. He was seen oh. he was seen in a shopper's drug mart wearing a TTC jacket, which is like the the local transit. <laughs> Welcome home, buddy. <laughs> Good going, Jimmy. You did Good it. Good going, Jimmy. <laughs> I just I can't imagine him outside of like high school in a wheelchair. Like I loved it so much and you then watched now Degrassi he's a lot? Some, now he's some not, not Jimmy. It's you watched you, you watched Degrassi a lot. Oh, I watched all of it. Yeah, I I had never heard of it. <laughs> it until it right doesn't now. It, until yeah, until this very moment. Um, no, I hadn't heard of it until I came to Canada, because it didn't make it across across the pond to to the UK. Really? For those in the UK that don't know, Degrassi is basically like Grange Hill, or um, never heard of that. <laughs> Uh, that didn't make it across. You've this never pond. heard of, of Grange Hill? How dare you? Grange Hill, or or for the for the oldies in the chat, uh, uh, Biker Grove. It's, it was Biker it's, Grove. Yeah, Biker Grove. May I set ask in Newcastle? What that's about? So you, to be honest, I don't remember. I just I, I just know that that. Have you heard of Ant and Deck? The, the the two the two uh, no. TV pre presenters no and and deck no anyway no. they they got out of Biker Grove and became TV hosts two of the biggest TV hosts in Britain okay hang on I'm looking at Biker Grove <laughs> it's b b uh, b y k biker oh my gosh it started in eighty nine there you go and it ended in two thousand six that had a long two thousand six what? I thought it ended in the 90s. No. I wonder Good if they Lord. were like Degrassi where they had like that first thing. Oh, and then probably. Kind of the middle and then third. I, I imagine it's, I would imagine it's like the next step where there's just new people joining the show over and over and over. So that's just like continually. Yeah, probably. Continually then. a new, new air quote show. Whereas like Degrassi, I think you had Degrassi and then Degrassi the next generation, right? Yep. And you still had like their parents who were the kids prior and oh which was really cool. <laughs> wow i didn't know they did that yeah they 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 did really well with how they built their story and then they were really good oops sorry i just hit the microphone which means i just hit everybody's ears i'm sorry kiss your forehead um <laughs> honestly the kiss was louder but you're okay <laughs> oh good i hope that they feel it then good yeah. But yeah, as soon as they like make the other kids graduate, then they kind of just kind of stay in the town. Some go off to college, but then the new ones come in or they're like younger mm. siblings. It's really cool. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know when it ended, actually. Maybe I should look that up. It was also in 2006. The death of a generation. <laughs> <laughs> That's my coffin company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it went until 2015. Hello? Wow. Yeah, and then they rebooted it. No, it went till 2017. Oh, that's because of that the next class. I guess I didn't see that one. The next class was the Netflix show, I think. They because oh. it went to Netflix for two seasons, but they only got they got the budget for one, and they oh, had yep. to stretch it across two seasons. It sure is. And oh wait, hang on, is Google telling on me? It says I already watched it. <laughs> Did I already watch it? It all just blended together. Is it is it that unre unremarkable? <laughs> of a season? 
I think you just blocked it from your memory already. Well, Jimmy wasn't in it, so that's all that matters, really. Honestly, I got rid of Jimmy, and I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, get rid of Jimmy, and, like, what's the point of watching it? <laughs> they they oh. kept, um... Um, oh, there was a kid. I think his name was Spencer. Hang on, hang on. Let's let's look this up. Or Spinner, Spinner. That was always a really Spinner. Fun name. Spinner, yeah. Spinner and Jimmy. Yeah. Spinner. <laughs> Never watched an episode. I have no idea who these people are apart from Jimmy, and that's because like he's Drake. I need to watch at least an episode. Yeah, that'll be my next YouTube series: is me reacting to to, to Degrassi. I feel like it'd be a hit. <clears throat> yeah, me reacting to Degrassi. Yeah, I'd watch it. I would be all of your viewers. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's Don't very worry. real. You would be my you. only viewer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your only fan. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <clears throat> but then they, they've... I don't know if you know this. As the massive Degrassi fan, you probably do. But they're, um, they're, they're rebooting it again. They're doing what? another... They're doing another... They were casting for it. When we were filming uh, season, season eight of The Next Step, an audition went out. Well, did were you filming. audition? I I wanted to. You I was like, have. "Where's the Where's the foreign exchange Brit that they hired to be the the English teacher or something?" Because of course he'd be the English teacher because he's English. Always. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> you got pranked. I'm you. telling you. I'm telling you. That's the, I wanted to, but they weren't looking. They were looking for the kids. They weren't looking for the. I wonder if know. it's because they're using past generations as the now adults. Because they tend to. Do I don't that. think so. I think so. they are going in. They are going in whole new cast, whole new crew. It's a Degrassi no in LA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Degrassi nights. We call nights. it Degrassi here. De Degrassi, because it's yeah, sure. Degrassi LA. Isn't that what Bel Air is basically? Have you watched that? I haven't watched that. Bel Air isn't like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, no. Have you not seen that they've rebooted Bel Air as drama? As a drama. Yeah, it's a comedy. Done... No, like, it's a slice of I know. life. No, they've done a they've done a full on uh, CW style drama called Bel Air. It's on its second season. A second season? Mm hmm. Where oh have you God. been? Um, working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have been working very hard. How's your new job? How's your new job going? It's amazing, honestly. I'm the happiest that I think I've ever been in this industry. Mm hmm. You know something? Something about benefits. It's real attractive. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a sweet spot that, you know, most of us will never feel as entertainers. Yeah, definitely so being self employed. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice because I get to do the same thing that I've been doing for eight years, but now I get to do it for a charity organization, which is really cool. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about the, for, for those who don't know, tell us about the, the, the organization. Let me, let me take a sip real quick. <laughs> mm. Yes. I know. Now I am ready. That, now I am so. ready to plug. Let me make it. Here, we want some bubbles. That's great. <laughs> it's perfect. I can only perfect hear. for podcasting is bubbles that are slightly not recorded by the mic properly. Every other bubble is recorded. <laughs> it's like a bubble wrap, but you only hear every other pop. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So for those of you that don't know. Which will probably be a lot of you, especially if you're not in America, because it won't make sense. However, I work for a non for profit called Wounded Warrior Project. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's obviously military based here in the US. I do believe we have like some locations in Germany, um, Tahiti, actually, we're making one, oh. and in Canada. Mm -hmm. But that's just because we have like bases and stuff bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. So there are like certain hubs, even though there's bases all over the world, but those are just like the ones externally. But basically, so I am a part of the live streaming gaming team, which is pretty new. Um, I say new, but they created it like two years ago, but haven't really known what to do with it because nobody has been in that profession. They've just been, you know, people that like games, but at the same time have completely different jobs within WWP. Mm -hmm. And I was brought on as a live stream and gaming fundraising specialist, which basically means I produce content for them and get to do all of the things that I already did, but I get benefits and a salary and a That's really sick team. So They're like the best. Cool. It's so yeah. cool. So I get to just play like D&D &D and be like, yo, if we get these creators on and fundraise, can't play D&D &D at work. <laughs> And they're like, hell yeah. 
Yeah, my yeah. boss is the sickest. She yeah, is so Yeah, why dope. not? Why not? Let's do it. Right? <laughs> has it been... So has it... Have you, like, fallen into it and it's just felt like another day at the office? Have there been, have there been challenges that you weren't expecting? Um, I've drank the Kool-Aid, that's for sure. I, I am all engulfed in this. Uh, I think the only difficulties have to do with normal adult office job stuff i never really learned outside of school years ago um like excel and like spreadsheet <laughs> how to properly answer emails without like being a low xd at the end of it <laughs> So I've had to really reel it in and be like, Sam, you can't say that. And, oh, you got to be um, super professional. To an extent, like my my team is super cool, even though they're all from the more conventional background mm-hmm. of a corporate job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am not. And so I was in a call with one of my um, one of my teammates and he because we both play Final Fantasy 14 together, so we were talking about that. And something happened in the story, and I was telling him the a reaction that I had. And I went, because I'm a petty hoe. And that was like <laughs> <laughs> in a team's call. <laughs> I was like, is this recorded? Is my boss can see this and be like, oh no. And I apologized to him profusely. I was like, wait, no, no, no. I, I didn't mean to say that. He's like, Sam, <laughs> I don't care. This is this team. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, I just I mean it sounds like you hit the jackpot to be honest for a corporate I job that I allows did. you to talk like that. I don't think I would say it to my CEO, but No, you wouldn't. No, they are Maybe not. You know, not not as hip. They're not yeah. as next generation as we are. They're not to grassy the next generation. They don't get it. The title of this episode, The Next Generation. The Next Generation? Am I going to call it Matcha the Next Generation? <laughs> where it's more milky than matcha yeah it's more milk than matcha I, actually to be honest just to go back to the matcha all of the matcha has sunk to the bottom of the glass so i'm getting very heavy hits of matcha at the you end of this like a big caffeine boost <laughs> well i it's my understanding that you get it's like a slower burn with matcha so it's not like a massive spike of caffeine when you have it yeah. Like a coffee, and then like a massive crash afterwards. Like this is more of a like, oh, I feel better, and then oh, I'm tired now. You know, as opposed to like, oh my god, I'm going to die. Oh my god, I'm going to die in both directions. Do you feel you like know? that every time you drink coffee? Oh no, I I'm have going to, to die. Uh, I have to, I have to have less caffeine than I used to, but that's more for my anxiety than anything else. If I didn't have anxiety, okay. I would be so much better, so much better, Sam. Wouldn't that like be? <laughs> The slogan of the world. If right. Anxiety, if I didn't have anxiety, I'd be able to just enjoy life. It'd be amazing. No, I have to have a single shot of es- of espresso in my coffees now. Oh, if I go, to, if I'm making it, or if I go to an, uh, a coffee shop. And if I if I'm at home, there's this new God. Now I'm going to get into the weeds. Are you are you a very coffee person? Are you like a like? Do you have like the espresso machine at home, the grinder, yes. etc.? Yes. You do. Yes. Okay. Do you have an AeroPress? That I do not. Do okay. you have one? I do. I don't have the espresso, espresso machine. I don't have the counter space for an espresso machine. But the AeroPress... <laughs> Only because I, I got the house. That's yeah. Kind of oh, it came with now. the house? Yeah, I bought a house. No, no, no. But I, the, did the espresso machine come with the house? No, 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 no. But it came oh, with a I very was... <laughs> nice counter space. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it came with an es- You can tell I've never even looked at buying a house when I think they throw in espresso well, no, machines. No, I mean, that's a valid thought. You never know what's an appliance that is available in some homes. Some homes are going I mean, to be like that. Yeah. Not me. Okay. All right. All right. And my I'll streamer go... budget? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. So the AeroPress. It's like a big plunger. If you if you oh hit the mic, there you go. Uh, if you if you don't know, Describe it's a, it's it like a people. it's a it's a big plastic uh, uh, syringe without the needle on the end. And instead of a needle, there's like a cap with a paper filter. You fill it with coffee, hot water, and then you just push. You're pushing the coffee through the paper filter. That's it. It's just it's just a way of getting coffee through a paper filter. They're so fun. Um, they are when they work. When they break, it's a nightmare. Um, I, there's a I, I found this one this one 
uh, device that you attach to the end of it that is like a pressure valve. It's pris It's called the mm -hmm. Prismo. And you attach it where the usual paper filter cap is. You, yeah. It goes there instead. And it has a valve that like increases the amount of pressure that pushes the espresso through. And so you get close to closer to an espresso machine level of like pressure. And so you get like almost espresso out of it, which is incredible. And That's I really want really it. Nice. Yeah. So if I get that, maybe I'll do that and just have little shots of espresso through my AeroPress if I can make that. But what I is haven't your normal go-to drink? Oh, that would be telling for my episode, though, Sam. I can't, I can't tell you that. But like, you'll have to listen to the episode I do where someone interviews me. <laughs> Who's interviewing you? Can you say that or not yet? No, I can't say. It. Dang it! I think that's, I think that's going to be like a special. That's going to be like a special episode or something. I don't know. Oh, make it a holiday episode. Holiday episode? Yeah, make it that yeah, far maybe. away. <laughs> Well, I <laughs> a holiday episode. Welcome to our Christmas one. You finally get to know what I drink. <laughs> yeah, my interviewee like a, uh, is um Santa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it'll just be it'll just be uh Jakey Boy Arts again, but wearing a beard on camera. Mm, I I love that actually. Yeah, he'll do his he'll do his Kratos voice the entire time. <laughs> he was doing a um 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 um. Looney Tunes, like the that's all folks, but like the de -de 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 -de. yesterday while we were playing Dead by Daylight, I was like, How does yeah. your how does your mouth do that? <laughs> and he's Jakey a talent. is impressive. So Jakey impressive. is a talent. He is a talent. He, he is. needs more work. Please hire Jakey Boy Arts, friends. If you're out yes. there, and you're looking hire for a talented for voice actor. Hire him for everything, please. Except for drawing. He needs to rest his wrist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But when it's ready to go, then <laughs> Yes. Then then you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> You'll you'll know. You'll know. You'll, you're like art. Jakey senses will be tingling. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's me on a good day, love. I don't know about you. Your Jakey mm. senses. You wake up and just like, ooh, Jakey. <laughs> What's that fella yeah. up to today? Exactly. Have you injured yourself like streaming at all? Do you get like, like, like uh, sciatic pain or anything like that? I found sitting in this chair, I get like. I have to stretch a lot because otherwise I start feeling like I'm uh, going to get like a deep vein thrombosis or something. Yes, I do. Um, a lot of mine is due to pregnancies. <laughs> you know, mm. just being a woman is a thing. Yeah. Uh, however, I actually just got a chair, which listeners can't see. But do you want to see it? Yeah, show it to the show it to the. This is your, this so is a YouTube this exclusive. Is, yeah, this is your like. Uh, this is just for the YouTube. I hope I pique their curiosity to come and watch the video instead. And please okay, subscribe hang. to the channel and ring the bell and all of that nonsense. Ooh, I gotta move stuff. That's all right. I'll describe it for the YouTube. I'll, I'll describe it for the non YouTubers. It's not. It's not. It's not this chair. Here, let's let's move. Oh, it's not that chair. No, oh, no, no, I see. No. This is my Herman Miller, which is also great and highly. That's also great. Lumbar pain. Yeah. I might get one. It's this. Sam is moving the chair across. Oh, it's one of those ergonomic yes. wooden horses things. Is that that is cool? It's so cool, but I don't know how you sit in them. Like this. You sit. Sam is showing us how to sit in the chair. <laughs> and then you, you put your knees on that and it like helps your Oh good lord. So it's almost. I'm describing it for the podcast. It's almost like a rocking chair. Yeah, it's like a um, it's like a big adult rocking chair. It's like an adult rocking chair. If you imagine how you yeah. would sit on a rocking chair, but instead of your feet being on little little uh, dubs, um, it thinking, has yeah. it has little knee pad. It has a knee pad place for you to put your knees down with yep. no back, and you just have to sit with your knees on it. And it helps relieve and pressure from your. Um, that's so cool. Spine. Yeah, it is like a learning curve as well, just because sitting like this for so long, even if you are being forced to, is still you know your muscles being yeah. worked, which is why I keep my Herman Miller close mm -hmm. by. But yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you find? Um, sorry, I just choked on some matcha, and I was in mid thought there. <laughs> That's that's the other matcha. That's not the one that you had. That one invaded. Yeah, no. This is this is because it's all at the bottom and it's very intense matcha. It's some of the best matcha I would ever <laughs> I would ever get. <laughs> if you're looking for an intense matcha, 
genuine. Oh my gosh, when I go keto. camping, I love having my matcha intense. So it's been great having you on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. See you next yeah, time. Yeah, time to hit great. the old Thanks, dusty Sam. trail. Yeah, yo, <laughs> sun's getting real Ding. low, Sam. Uh... <laughs> Yep, see you at the holiday episode of Samta. Yeah, Samta! Oh, now we need that. Oh, oh, oh. Have you done interviewing stuff before? Have you interviewed people? Yes, uh, I'm, a, like... I'm, I'm a host in several capacities within the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. So, ah, uh, is <laughs> your face you... when you take those sips? <laughs> it's so intense. It's really strong matcha at the bottom of my glass. I can't help it. <laughs> Um, but okay. So did you, did you like always have that kind of charisma? Always had that, I mean, you've always had the charisma, but I'm wondering if you always had that kind of knack of being able to, to, you know, chat to people and interview yes. people and those kind of things. Yeah. Yes. I've always been, um, a self-proclaimed extroverted extrovert. I don't tend to shy away from people, mm. uh, unless they are, <sighs> It really, really depends. But I don't get starstruck much, except for the very few people in the world who, like, inspired me as a kid. Those ones I probably cannot approach very well. Who, who was that? that? Did you have, do you have, like, someone that was... I mean, Laura Bailey was one of them. And I actually just got a photo with her because of their uh, Stray Gods. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were doing, like, a premiere for it. Mm -hmm. It was out in August. But anyway, and I... <sighs> It was, a, it was a small invite list, so like I was just around all these people that I adore, but her yeah. specifically because my first like anime that wasn't on TV that mm. I was able to like purchase on a DVD back in the day <laughs> um, was Fruits Basket, and she voiced Toru Honda, who was the protagonist. Mm. And as a kid, Toru Honda inspired Little Sam, and so I based a lot of who I am on that character. And so wow. Laura Bailey has influenced literally Sam from a little yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah. So I saw her and I could not approach her at all. But my brother knows what she means to me. And so mm -hmm. my brother went up to her and he was like, hey, my sister's a really big fan of you. And she was like, where's your sister? <laughs> like looking around. Oh my God. I was like, no. <laughs> Crying on the inside, but at the same time screaming and like peeing yeah. and everything yeah. at once. Yes. Entire collapse, complete collapse of everything. Yeah, and so I, she she pulled me over, and um, it it was just like so surreal because then her husband Travis, uh, Travis Willingham, for those of you that don't know, he, and my husband and I are big fans of him as well. But he was like, "You two should get a picture together," and he took our picture, and I was just like, "What is happening right now?" So and that's, yeah, that's got, yeah, that's now up. That's now up on a on a twenty four by twenty four on the wall now, or a thirty foot uh, picture in the in the living room, small. right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's on my ceiling. I wake up every morning and I'm just like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah. It's a bed throw. It's t shirts that the family has to wear. Yeah, <laughs> like the yeah. the like the annoying um, matching ones that everybody has. Like thing one, Absolutely. thing two. It's son of yeah. Sam, who met Laura Bailey, one, and brother of Sam, who met Laura Bailey, <laughs> husband of Sam, who met Laura Bailey, <laughs> and then I can be Sam, who met Laura Bailey. It's be beautiful. Yeah. It's perfect. I actually like that marketing. Uh, tune into one of Miles' shows. Maybe we'll do a giveaway for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I can't wait for that. That's yeah, so that's nice, great. though. That's such, a, such an incredible... I don't know. I think as someone that's been on something that people have watched, you don't really think about that stuff when you're filming. You're like, oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I, I get to, I get to actually do the thing that I want to do as a job. And you don't really think about like, cause I suppose it, it would be a bit quite egotistical to, to be like, this is going to inspire someone one day. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, that's the cool thing about every character played mm -hmm. is that, that person's story, even though it's fictional, mm. is something to someone. Even if they're a mm -hmm. negative person, it might help people find like what is bogging them down or making them, you know, angsty or oh, mm. fun word, persnickety, which means fussy. Persnickety. There you go. Yeah, that's a fun word. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. And 
I I hope that you you feel feel good about you know the character that you've been able to portray, and people I do. have been like Miles. <laughs> you yeah, inspired me. I mean, no one said that. No one said that I've inspired oh, I'm them. I'm saying but, it. But, Oh, you're saying you, okay, great. Yeah, thanks. You inspired. Thanks. Me. Thanks. You do that. Thank you. Oh, so sweet. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> have you have you? Uh, this is where I expose you in 4K. Have you have you uh, had a look at the show at all? At uh, at the next step? Because no, I know you. I haven't. No, and I, I know you were trying to find it, and I don't know whether you ever found it. I didn't find it. However, um, another thing is, I realize I can't watch content my friends are in. Oh. It really. I don't know what it is, but it bothers me. <laughs> not in like a. <laughs> not, not like a super like, negative I? way, but it just like <laughs> feels weird because I know I have a different relationship with mm. these people. And so seeing them in another capacity, for some reason, my brain cannot connect that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I get that. It's strange. I, I, Unless it's I like a D&D or TTRPG, because then it's like a quick on and off, but not like a full production. Uh, yeah. Because even Friends YouTube videos, I struggle so bad. I'll like yeah. put it on in the background just to give them the support where <laughs> I can, but I, ca I can't watch them. Yeah. No, I get that. Uh, there's like my girlfriend is the opposite. She won't. She refuses to watch anything that I'm in. Yeah. Because she knows me as me, and she doesn't want to like see that part because I'm I'm playing different people, and it's kind of I guess there's like a weird uh, disconnection between the two of like me yeah. and then the other me that's you know in a car park or getting punched by someone or whatever. Um, that's fine. Uh, that happens every day. I get punched in the car park every day. Every day. <laughs> yeah. There's a video I compilation thought we, I thought we, somewhere. 365 yeah, I we were, miles punches. <laughs> I thought we were going to keep that quiet, Sam. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Just like we're, we film only on Mondays. Yeah, only on Mondays. I, I think I, I'm fine. I, I, I think having having met people that are in things that that are quite well known, it's difficult for me to watch it and not be like comparing them to the character they're playing yeah. it's like characters is... who get famous for a certain role that they mm -hmm. play for a long time and then even them playing a new role is off putting yeah. to people because they associate them as a certain personality yeah jenna fisher had that issue from the office the the oh she, yeah in, in her book she wrote um which if you're ever wanting to become an actor read jenna fisher's book the actor's life a survival guide um she talks about how she she booked a three camera sitcom like like Big Bang Theory with yeah. um with Matt LeBlanc. And it was and they'd filmed the pilot and she got fired from it because they said Pam would never date Joey. Why did they hire her? I don't know. The casting thought it was good. The producers all wanted I guess it was probably an exec, like a higher up that was like Pam would never date Joey, but that was that was the note that she got, the reason why they fired her for it was because then fire Joey. Keep her on and find a guy that she would date. <laughs> like, what the? That sounds yeah. so sexist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Cute. Love but that. Then, but then, like, why Why would Joey... Why would they want to have Joey... Like, he, uh, have you what seen... You... Um, Sorry, I'm all over the shop. Have you seen... That's okay. Um, Same. I have ADHD. What is it called? That, he Matt LeBlanc was in a in a, a BBC comedy. You, you might not have heard of it where these two English writers get sent to L.A. to make an American version of their successful British show. And they, had, and they wanted to bring this actor that had been in the original, in the British show, over to America. And then that guy gets recast as, with Matt LeBlanc. Is it called so, Episodes? Yes, Episodes. That's it. Okay, because I Googled it and I was like, why is it showing me Episodes? Episodes of what? <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I keep looking at. And yeah. I was like, then there's like a title. It's like Episode Season 1. I was like, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, it's called Episodes. And they, have, oh. and they have this bit where, and the whole bit is why are we getting Joey to play this headmaster of an old boys school? Well, like, because the, uh, the show that they wrote in England was about an all boys school and the headmaster and the kind of whatever and then they have like I think I'm remembering this right I might be wrong but they have they have they have they 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 replace this old kind of well established actor from England and they replace him with Joey from Friends and that's the whole <laughs> and that's the whole bit Is he actually on the episode? 
Yeah, no, he's in the whole show. Oh, that's hilarious. That, it's better. the whole show is the three of them like trying to make a show work, and the the conflict of him playing this hyper stylized version of Matt LeBlanc, who just wants a success after <laughs> after uh, after Friends. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is an actor struggle for sure. I mean, it Daniel is. Radcliffe is one of them yeah. that yeah. severely struggled. Um, did you um did you yeah. i mean we don't have to get too into it but like did you did you watch his um did you watch his uh was it glad special he did it he did it no was it i did it. i know what you're talking or, about who, what I, was it the trevor project or glad? Uh, i can't remember i think it was trevor project yeah i didn't yeah, watch it though. did you was it good yeah it was really good I it was really it really really great um just to be able to give a platform. I don't think many people that weren't part of the LGBTQ community in the first place watched it, to be honest, um, because it wasn't particularly marketed that much. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think, I think it was really great to, 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 have, to have him be the host of that platform in, in kind of the, the, uh, the counterpoint, if you will, to, to, to his thing. But he's yeah. always been great, right? Daniel Radcliffe, he's always yeah. been kind of... Um, even though he picks the wildest roles, which I wonder if is if it's because people super associate him with a very specific role that he's just like, let me show you I can do other things, and he does. He nails them every single time. Yeah. I think what off puts people is just not even his name, just like his look. Yeah, like you look at him and you think, yeah, you have a specific character, and it's like, oh, that kind of sucks. When yeah, he's so talented. yeah. I think that's why he. I mean, I think that's why he does the the full beard now. Mm -hmm. He's got the different like haircut and, and stuff. Too. He really want he wants to try and like look as 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 uh, as little as Harry Potter as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I think he does he does mostly a good job. I think there's a couple of ones where where he he's just. Uh, you mean seeing him on Broadway butt naked wasn't your favorite thing? <laughs> What do you mean? That's a hot commodity, Miles. Oh my gosh, zaddies no zaddies, right? Z <laughs> yeah, I mean it's real, recognize real. Real, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm good for him, you know, to to yeah. take that take up that kind of role so quickly. Did you see yeah. it? No, I didn't. No, I mean, I no. was in London. I I didn't see it, but like. It's, it's my asexual it, self i could care less <laughs> <laughs> no i just i just uh for me i think it was i don't know nothing stood out to me as like oh yeah i really want to go see harry potter fall in love with a horse that wasn't my <laughs> my bag really that was it really on your bucket list of nah. like, great, great work that you want to see no mm, okay. no i'm not i'm not a big i i'm not bizarrely like i really need to be super excited about a play or a musical for me to want to go and see it that makes sense because like that takes I, a lot of energy to get up and go out it's, it's not everybody's expensive. cup of matcha tea but it could be if you get the brand if that you miles get has genuine tea keto matcha <laughs> you yeah, can tell i've been a, an influencer for far too long i hate it i mean i mean the segues are just flawless thank you Thank you, thank you. It's I'm not. Very, this is great. not even a sponsored thing. I like. I, if genuine I tea doesn't get up, <laughs> like, if genuine tea doesn't be. send me an email, I'm gonna be so upset. You send them an email with this podcast and be like, "Oh, hey, yeah." By the way, you should sponsor me because I'm doing great. Yeah. By the way, can you give me some money, please? That'd be great. Have you been yeah. to the theater recently? Um, like stage theater or cinema? Yeah. Yeah, stage theater. No, I have not. And it is something that I have been craving. I'm a big opera person. I love oh, really? operas and um, ballets and things like that. Yeah. It's something mm -hmm. I used to do when I lived in Louisiana, but mm -hmm. haven't really had to do anything out here. And it sucks because I'm literally in like LA and where everything is. Yeah. It's just either the shows occur on weekends I'm not available or dates that I'm just not here. Or maybe mm -hmm. I miss out on ticket sales, so it's just like, well, okay, maybe, maybe yeah. one day. But like yeah. you said, it has to be something you really want to go out and. And there's a lot of bad the theater event. in LA, right? Yeah. <laughs> Too much. We have Drake. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> there's a lot going on here yeah. in LA. We're kind of yeah. bopping these days. Come on, Jimmy's in, in town now. Do you think I gotta yep. go see bad theater when I'm hunting down Jimmy in the wheelchair? Come on. Wait, no, no, don't use the word hunting. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Wait, that's, too not soon. What you, that's not what you do. <laughs> in my I thought America? that's what everyone did in LA was just go on, on hunting parties. Yeah. I heard it was wild. I heard it was wild in LA. I didn't I didn't think it was I wonder what a hunting party would entail. In LA? <laughs> like is it like a bar crawl, but <laughs> you're just going like location, location, <laughs> hunting something? Are we like a uh what's his name? There's a bounty hunter. Uh Dog uh, the bounty hunter. Yeah, or are, are we all him and but like a gaggle? <laughs> a gaggle of dog. <laughs> yeah. A, a a pack of dogs. A gaggle of dogs, a pack of dogs. Well, I like the idea of us being geese hunting somebody. <laughs> so a gaggle of geese, but like we're like him. I'm sorry. <laughs> At what point did the episode fall apart for you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This is great. I think this is quality content. Absolutely. All of it. From start Absolutely. to finish. Not a single second is being cut from this. It's great. Yeah, I have not. And if it is, I'll uh, know. I remember every single second. Yeah, you got a good memory. Um, <laughs> maybe with things I like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wait, hang on. That came out wow. wrong. I didn't even know about your podcast. <laughs> wow. I meant wow. like I'm not gonna remember things in my past that maybe uh-huh. just weren't as enjoyable, but mm-hmm. I'll remember. Phantom mm-hmm. of the Opera for the first time, and that was my right. favorite thing ever. So, mm-hmm. and I will fully remember uh, all of the seconds of this podcast. What is the name of this podcast? Podcast of a generation. Ah, the next generation. The ne- no, it's not the next. No, it's start. We <laughs> we're back to the beginning of the episode. Star Trek will sue oh, me. Oh, I mean, uh, the generation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's what thank I said. You. What did you say? Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. No. Yeah, you're right. wild. <laughs> you're still nursing that much. <laughs> I, I, dude, it is. It is entirely like matcha powder at the bottom. It hasn't even dissolved. I don't know if camera can pick it up, but like, there's just lumps of matcha. Oh, at the it's bottom. probably not going to. That's why usually you you have to dissolve it in like a hot water. I know. I just didn't add enough. Rice. That's okay. I like Maybe matcha you know, for though. Next time. D- I mean. I, 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 when I came up with the concept for this podcast, I was like, oh yeah, it'd be great. I'll have the drinks with people in the morning. We'll, we'll chat about what we, what they do and blah, blah, blah. And then I realized that like, y'all are crazy. And some people have really, yeah. Some people have really weird drinks. Oh, (laughs) no, I'm not going, I'm not, I I couldn't possibly, I've done, I've done a few. I'm, I've got more on the way. Yeah, I'm. I'm not trying to. I don't know what order this is coming out in yet, Sam. So I don't, I'm not going to highlight which one this is. Shut I up. hope I'm number one so that would confuse everybody whenever you say Jakey's episode before this. Yeah, and then I'm. Yeah, I remember it on that last. second of the podcast. I'll put, Jake, I'll put I'll put Jakey's episode last. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to throw him off. He's even after the holiday episode. Yeah, yeah, he's like three years down the line. That's that's oh, when no. this is that's when this is a show. This is when this is a network television show. Then he's like thriving out... in his art career three years from now, and yeah. you come out yeah. with this podcast and you say, yeah, "Yeah, don't, don't, you know, commission him. He's wrist needs to be rested." Yeah, he rests his like, wrist. And he's like, "Why work. would you?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's like highlights of his commissions are completely getting cut because they're just like, "Oh, sorry about, sorry about your wrist. I didn't mean to." <laughs> this, is a, this is the third time we brought Jake up in the episode, and I really appreciate it. He's Sorry, such a good. We love him. He, yeah, They're so great. How I do you Dead meet him? With him and I just I've forgotten. We should play that. Do you play? What D- Dead by Daylight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Dead by Daylight. Did you see the new character that's coming out? I did. It's ridiculous. I can't wait to see everybody running around as Nicolas Cage. A, an entire team of Nicolas Cage is running around. Oh, I, yeah. I, he should have been a killer, in my opinion. I was about opinion. to say, what if they also release him as a killer? So you have, like, killer Nicolas Cage, who might be the real one, or he's trying to find the real one amongst <laughs> the survivors who are running amok. Right? That I mean, sounds they're like missing a good a time. That sounds like they're missing and a trick. Yeah. They're missing a trick. I mean, I... I, I... I, I I know that it's like a meme to to either love or hate Nicolas Cage, and he's oh, so he weird. Him. He's, great. he's uh, you, wait, you met Nicolas Cage? No. Oh, I was gonna say, I was gonna no. get really excited there for a second because I wanted I to know like, but you remember the good times though, Sam. It was trauma. 
<laughs> it's been 84 years. It was a hard time. <sighs> when he smiled at me in that toothy grin. It was like a rictus grin, Miles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I too have felt... You're I making too me have remember felt this, this, and I don't I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll put a trigger warning at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <trigger laughs> Nicholas Cage trigger warning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I. I mean, I, there are events that you're probably in the same room as people you don't know realize it. So maybe I met him. <laughs> didn't know it was him. There's you no would way. remember Nicholas no Cage being at an event. Yeah. He's hiding actually in a like um a big suit, like a mascot. I mean, it wouldn't put it past him. He's so strange. But then also yeah. he just walks in and every like the magnetism of him like just like. You know, you see him at red carpets and stuff, and everyone just wants to see Nick Cage walking yeah. down a red carpet, like, just in case he does something insane. He is Hollywood royalty. Absolutely. So I'm assuming you like him then, right? You're not one of the, the, the haters out there? No, I'm not a hater. I think he's weird. I, th I don't oh, understand yeah. him. But I think that that's the best kind of... Yeah. Like, I think it is. I think he's... Creative. He's like the weird nerd that like isn't a nerd, but is also like a, more of a nerd than most people. Like he he owns that number one comic of Superman. His son is called Kal El. Man, he's like me for real. But then like he's not. Yeah. My son's name is Kal El. Your son's name is Kal El. <laughs> name's Kal -El. <laughs> no, but my son's name is based off of a character. Which character is that, Sam? <sighs> It's upsetting because of the franchise. I do not support yeah. Yeah. Turf Land. But mm -hmm. my son's middle name is Alistair from Alistair Moody. Because mm. I love him. He's just a kooky old man, and I thought he was excellent. Like, that's the kind of strong man I want my son to be. Yeah. Take no BS. And he also, no had the, he also had the weird roaming eye at the beginning, right? Yeah, which I do too. I have a lazy eye, and my dad has a lazy eye. So, oh, lazy, you actually? A lazy eye. Yeah. I thought I was just doing a bit. I didn't even realize. No, <laughs> I mean, he was a bit, but at the same time, yeah. Mine's not as significant yet. I don't know. My mm. dad's, my dad looks like an iguana. It's kind of great. You never know which eye you're looking at. Whenever you talk to him, you ask him, dad, which eye do I need to look at? And he'll be like, I don't know, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's excellent. You see, I I'm, didn't fall far from the tree. Is it not wearing glasses helps with that? I forgot. I've, oh, I, yeah. I looked this up and I can't remember how it... Yes, it does help to correct, but you have to wear your glasses for that to work. Oh. So in not wearing your glasses, that kind of makes it worse then? Yeah, because your oh, eye is okay. trying to constantly adjust. Right. So. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. I tried. I tried to wear contacts last year. Yeah, leading up to TwitchCon, because I always walk around with no glasses because I don't want, I don't like the glare that it does in photos with people mm -hmm. and two i don't like that it leaves indentations on my makeup when i need to take them off yeah so i just decide to go without being able to see very far uh which is not a good time because i also can't see at night and conventions tend to be very dark <laughs> so i always have somebody with me <laughs> so if you like wave from 20 feet away i'm just like who is that <laughs> to whoever's with me <laughs> The amount of times you it happens is ridiculous. You are revealing your secrets here, Sam. Like, like people are going to be like, oh, no, she said on that podcast she can't see me. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So if you make funny faces at me, I'll just be like, wow, they're just so happy. Look at them. Oh, great. I love that. And they're actually, like, flicking me off. Great yeah. times. That's yeah. never happened. I don't think. No. Maybe I haven't seen them. Who knows? <laughs> I, I would – I wouldn't – I would be uh, – sorry, this match is kicking in. <laughs> You're I, I highly doubt that that's the case. I highly doubt. That. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. I tried. I tried a uh, contacts. You wear glasses? No, I've never had an eye test. Really? And you have yeah, light eyes. I'm just. I'm just so great. You know that's <laughs> true. You are so great. <laughs> Thank you. Tell no, yourself I, that. I, I I need to. I need to go get eye tests because my grandfather had cataracts. So I feel like mm. I need to keep an eye on it. Pun intended. Especially, uh, haha, but, especially how much um screen time we do nowadays. I know. I get I so know. nervous. Yeah. But did contacts not work for you then? Um, so it took me an hour and a half sitting in the office of my doctor to get the first one in. Oh um, yeah, it was she, she because they cannot 
give you contacts without seeing you put them in and take them mm-hmm. out because obviously that can become an issue if it like gets stuck or horror mm-hmm. or goes mm-hmm. and like die. Yeah. Anyway, so I was sitting there forever trying to do it. And then eventually, eventually I got one in mm-hmm. and it was the wrong prescription. And I was like, I can't, this is worse. And it, it's because my left eye is worse than my right eye. Mm-hmm. And they gave my left eye the same prescription as my right eye because it wasn't too far off. However, my left eye has astigmatism. So, which means I'm like a fishbowl um, on one side. And that's my lazy eye too. <laughs> so, I I don't know. I don't know. But she was like, okay, well, let's go redo the prescription and give you another contact. And so, then I had to sit there and try to get it out. That was a horror story and a half. But eventually, oh, no. eventually I'll save you the... <laughs> but I eventually got it out and then they gave me the new prescription. I was able to get it in in like 25 minutes, maybe like less than half an hour, barely. Okay. Um, so I did that and I could kind of see better. It was like, okay, yeah, because you know, you need to adjust. So I, as that one adjusted, I put the other one in eventually. <laughs> I don't know how long that one took at that point. Trauma. Forget the things you don't want, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i got them both in my um they were obviously weird feeling like you can tell something is on your eye it's not it doesn't hurt it doesn't feel like something's poking you or anything but it's just something's there and you know yeah, it yeah but i could see better and i was like whoa i don't have mm. frames on this is mm. great mm-hmm. um wore them the rest of the day ran all my errands and um Nobody warned me that if you have chronic dry eyes, oh, no. um, that this can be a problem. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> it, it took <laughs> it took until midnight, starting at eleven p.m., to remember that I could Google, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then once I Googled, I found. Um, is it optometrist, the doc- eye doctor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I found I found that video on YouTube of someone be like, oh, if your contacts are hard to take out or maybe they're dry, this is what you can do. There, there were so many methods of uh, pulling your eyelids every which direction. Think of like Mario 64 in the beginning, like the starting screen when you can pull his eyes like in his nose and face yeah. every direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was basically yeah. me with my eyelids. Um, still couldn't get this. Yeah. And then it was like, you can put a bunch of uh, eye drops in there, you know, to moisten your eyes so that maybe it'll come out. And um, around like 3.45 a.m., oh, no. I finally, <laughs> after crying, like I just sat on the bathroom floor, like crying, just like, please come out of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to get my... Um, I think it was my right one I was able to get out maybe after an hour or so. It was the left one. Really struggled with that one. So I never put them in again because that was the worst 24 hours of my life. What? Horrifying. What, optometr- Horrifying. what optometrist goes like, uh, eh, they're about the same and then doesn't tell you about, doesn't ask you if you get dry eyes and doesn't tell you like what to do if that's the case. It sounds yeah. like you just went to a, like a back alley optometrist that has like a magnifying well, I mean, glass they're like a target goes, yeah, optometrist so target mm. yeah they have an optometrist mm, in there target come on like she's a real sweet lady and she did a really nice eye exam and she even asked like you know do you know your old prescription because it was in their system from years ago mm. and i told her and she for some reason was like okay we'll try it at the same prescription and one without the astigmatism and she's like why wait wait if it was from years ago why wouldn't they just give you an eye test no, no, they did. They did. Because my prescription was actually the same from a few years ago, so they were double checking. Um, because a lot of times oh. also, if you want to go and get like LASIK, your eyes yeah. have to show that they are not constantly changing. So right. they'll have to do stuff like that to see if the prescription is either the same or very, very close. Right. But which I do want to do eventually, because you know, then I don't have to worry about anything are like you, that. And you're able you're gonna be able to do that? <clears throat> Mentally, maybe not, but uh <laughs> Like it's like a it's like a roller coaster ride when you see the roller coaster at first and you're like, that's a really yes. steep drop and then you're on the climb and you're like this sucks why did I do this I can't get off there's no emergency button I can see them like where they can walk you, mm-hmm. you know for maintenance but I can't mm-hmm. get out and then yes. eventually it just happens right yes. and it's terrifying but then you're done yes. and you're like oh wait that was great 
So I think yeah. that's how LASIK's going to be. Yeah, my mum got LASIK, and she was oh. she was like very nervous up until she did it, and then she did it, and she was like, "Yeah, it was fine." Yeah, because idea and she's is terrifying. She's a big softie, my mum. Yeah, you're awake, yeah, yeah, yeah. and your eyes are getting like lasered. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. horrifying. I, I, it's funny you mentioned that the 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 uh the not being able to get off of off of uh of rides and stuff because that is like my uh nightmare scenario going to like really? like i yeah for real like i had um i had a i went on splash mountain as a kid oh and and it was the most terrifying i had no idea what i was getting on and it was the most terrifying what? experience like i saw the drop but i didn't know that there were other drops in the dark inside splash mountain oh oh, oh no. and that they get bigger oh, and no. bigger as you go down so it, like by the time we got to the top one the big one i was like looking for exits and considering jumping out of the boat it was it was like i don't enjoy this this is not for me why am i on this boat uh and uh, c- couldn't get out of the boat obviously and uh yeah so that that whole thing of like i need to get off this ride and i cannot get off the ride is is like that's that's a core that's a core fear of mine (laughs) yeah yeah it's honestly the and i know that this is something we share um Mm. fear flying yeah um and every every time i get on a flight i'm just like i have to do it because i gotta go to work and um as soon as I'm in the air, I'm like, okay, like it's fine. We're smooth sailing. And then it's always when the turbulence hits and you're just like, this is like the 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 rise of the or the incline of the roller coaster. Yeah. Um, except <laughs> you're not on the ground. You're really far <laughs> on the ground. Uh, you know the the worst part is. Um the the uh I when I've gone on to like Reddit and whatever to like and you know, see what what pilots say and you know yeah, people have same. asked like oh I've, what actually, do i, I do with we it? talked about that too yeah and they're all like oh well you're only dropping you're only dropping 40 feet even when it feels like it's dropping a, a thousand feet that's it's like feet that's like that's like four floors i was about to say you can <laughs> die from that height you can yeah <laughs> like i know that there's nothing beneath the plane so i'm i'm not worried about the plane crashing into something immediately i'm just like I'm falling free fall for four four flights. That's not that's not a fun time for me. No. I don't like that. Thank you very much. Because then it gives you like that like tickle feeling in your belly. Yeah. And, oh, which you awful. know is fun when you're maybe like in a car going over a hill and you're like, hee, hee, that was a fun hill. But when you're in an airplane doing it, it's just like that's yeah. not okay. I don't. Yeah, like and it feeling. drops. It drops, and then the autopilot is already running, and it's like, oh, I should get back up there. So it just pulls up immediately, and you fly back up at the same speed. Yep. No. And then, I don't want that. And that's like the start of it, and then like turbulence itself. Oh. No. Do you have no. like a turbulence story? Not that really. Is, like your worst. Uh, like honestly, like turbulence doesn't. Like I haven't had a really terrible experience with turbulence. Although I remember oh, my dad really? was my dad was telling me that when we were coming back from Florida once, um, I was on a plane and they had video games in the seat at the Sick. front they had like they had like old classic like zelda and whatever and etc and i was at the time i was so obsessed with video games i didn't have video games at home so i was just like oh my god i finally get to yes i get to play ah unlimited access to a video game for seven hours unlimited i didn't power yeah so i did that for um the whole time and we went through like really rough turbulence and i didn't notice because i was so locked in to this video game and then we got off the plane and i immediately felt sick because i had been so like focused on this game that yeah. i hadn't like i hadn't noticed the the different things happening to to my body because of the turbulence but i i haven't had like a super rough turbulent flight and that's like Good, i hope you don't oh i know but i think that's that's gonna happen it's getting worse as as the as the earth heats up because of uh, the humans. weather yeah yeah turbulence I, is just ugh. getting worse so um no let's get some high speed trains please and would love and that you know as yeah I i'd like it. a bullet train across the planet please that would be nice or uh transporters nice. from star trek or that i think they're working on it maybe or teleporters you know can i just teleporters yeah yeah <laughs> 
Uh, I don't care if it kills me and clones me. That's fine. I'll do that. My clone can live on. It's fine. That's right. I'm surprised that you already had like this innate fear of flying ish or like the not having it triggered by a bad mm. turbulence experience. Because yeah. my mine triggered from a bad turbulence experience back in 2020. Mm. Going <laughs> funny and Neil to Florida. Um <laughs> It's Florida. It's always Florida. It's because I go completely across country from California to there. And in yeah. the south, there's always there's always storms or clouds yeah, or things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's always Anything once they start the equator, the Midwest right? that I get hit. And uh, man, it was the first time I've ever like I, you know, would experience little jolts, obviously. Like you're going against wind. That's how it is. But um, I saw this person walking back from the bathroom because they just turned the seatbelt sign on and um we hit turbulence and they hit the ceiling <gasps> and somebody else fell out of their chair yeah it was horrifying oh god and um it, i i that was my first time it triggered like i'm going to die we're gonna die like, this yeah. is it yeah. and so eventually <laughs> We, it was fine. I landed and I'm like kissing the ground. I didn't actually kiss the ground. Don't do that. That's mm. gross. Um, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> metaphorically, I was kissing the ground. <laughs> yeah. And um, I then suddenly just had so much fear of getting back on an airplane. Yeah. And it has been horrifying since. But thankfully, every flight since then has been not th that bad turbulence. Obviously, mm. anytime I hit even the smallest amount now, it triggers my fight or flight. Mm -hmm. um, and how have you, have you, uh, how do you like go through that? How do you cope through that? Do you have um, like mechanisms that you've worked out? Kind of. I try. So I do have uh, prescribed medicine that'll calm me down immediately, but I try not to mm. take it because obviously mm. I don't want to have to rely on that. Yeah, for sure. But back when I was a surrogate with twins, I actually did hypnosis as a oh. way to learn how to handle oh. nausea. And huh. so. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sick, and it works really well. Um, so since my my anxiety starts bringing up my nausea and everything before I freak out, mm. I just use those methods, and it's um, also a part of like relaxing your bar body. If you start re really tensing, like from from your from your fingers all the way like to your toes and stuff like that, and try to deep breathe and feel every single muscle going up your body, like tense it, release it. And then, like, try to feel your ankles or the top of your feet. Like, just try to make those muscles tighten and loosen. Mm -hmm. And over time, it should hopefully help relax your brain um, mm. from that extra stimuli. Mm. But if I can't get it to work, then obviously I'm going to take my medicine because yeah. I'm the person who's, like, white knuckling on my seat. And I have to sit in a window seat because I have yeah. to see that, like, yeah, the engine's not on fire or that it's just clouds. I have to I, visually I, see that. It, yeah, I it's for me it's like I when I can't see where I'm going, that's the worst part for me. Yeah. So like It's like diving in a dark ocean and not yeah. knowing what's below you. So like going in the plane and looking out the window, I like to be able to see the ground because I like to see if we're over water or like any mm -hmm. kind of control that I can have over it. And I really just want planes to start putting cameras on the front of the plane so you can just see on your TV screen where you're going. Oh, but they like they they don't. They, there's some planes that they used to have like a camera in the above the landing gear so you could watch the. But like, why would you want that instead of just the the, the nose of the plane? Yeah, um, that sounds so serene too. Yeah, to be able to see like the clouds that you're flying through and stuff, or like yeah. if you're going towards some clouds. Oops. The mic. If you're going towards some clouds, like, oh, okay, there's clouds coming up. I'll I'll make sure to keep an eye out for turbulence. Or like, oh, there's clear air. There's less chance of mm -hmm. us hitting turbulence, so I'll relax a bit. But like, the fact that I can't see what's coming until we're almost in it, out the side of the window, is just so stupid to me. And it, yeah, flying at night is not my favorite. Oh yeah, flying at night is the worst that. as well. Yeah, so I'm just looking out for trying to find the moon. So like, wait. Yeah, either that or like you can at least see the little blinking red light on the wing, and as long yeah. as it's not a big fiery light. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. so okay ish. It's always so funny. Do you ever fly and like get that anxiety? But there's like a kid just on their iPad, and you're like freaking out, yeah. but they're just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I hate them. I hate them, I and I hate <laughs> the I, I hate them, and I hate the like older 
older white gentleman reading the newspaper in the middle seat always. of the middle of the plane. It's always, always some older white guy that in a, in like a in like a disheveled suit and he's reading the newspaper while the plane is dropping seven feet. I'm like, listen, I don't care about anything else other than you are the worst right now. <laughs> I feel like they're they're thinking, I've lived a long life. Time yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wife left me. I got nothing left to lose. Yeah. And the kid just hasn't had their trauma yet in life. So yeah. that's the, it. The kids are too trusting. Us. And then there's us going like, I have life left to live. I have a, I have a son. I have a child. <laughs> Please. <laughs> he needs his mother. <laughs> oh, God. Flying. Oh, Jesus. oh. I... But what I was getting to is I got my... Uh, my second worst flight a couple uh, months ago. I remember you saying, yeah. Yeah, it was from huh, Florida back to California. It's Florida, but it's always Florida. This time I was already prepared because flights were getting grounded because of storms that were happening. Because mm -hmm. um, even some of my teammates got like misplaced and had to either get a rental to drive the rest of the way home or stay somewhere or something like that. Wow. Yeah. And funnily enough, I went with one of my teammates two hours after my boss and one of our teammates, and they landed in the same airport that we did, but their plane was grounded and their plane like was canceled for the rest of the night because mm -hmm. of the storms. Mm -hmm. My plane wasn't, and it took off at the same time as theirs would have. Um, and I, 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 I mentally prepared for it, and thankfully I love a pilot that is really good at communicating um, and he was clear. He was like, there are some storms. We're going to do our best to go around them, but just be prepared for, you know, some some bumps and stuff. You know how they say it and like they're, uh, you yeah. know, some bumps, but it'll be OK. Yeah. And uh, the weather look uh, pretty good over there in San Diego, California. <sighs> yeah. Pilots it's like, okay, cool, like, I got to get through that first. Uh, uh, but it's it was 400 feet. It's 400 feet. That's nothing. <laughs> it's just That's a pilots. Yeah. But just get over it. It sucked because it was a night flight because the sun had <sighs> already gone down. God. And um, my, I couldn't see the wing from where I was sitting because it was behind me. No, so Sam. I, the only way that I could find something when we were going through like this terrible turbulence. Oh, but the way it started, you know how they come down the aisle with the yeah. drinks, you know, and they're just yeah. like, mm, what can I get you? Yeah. Peanuts or a... Yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the two flight attendants who were doing that, we were obviously hitting like some, some little normal turbulence yeah. and they seemed calm and i remember to always watch their reaction mm -hmm, pay attention mm -hmm. to the flight attendants because if they're calm you should be calm but then mm -hmm. again i also know it's a profession but yeah anyway yeah. the um flight attendant from first class came on the speaker and she was like flight attendants please take your seats now oh my god she, i've never oh. in my life Heard a flight attendant so terrified, and I'm just thinking, why in God's name would you make an announcement like that when you are god awfully fearing everything? Oh, and so gosh. I immediately I popped my medicine. I had to. There was no way. I was like, I cannot. Yeah. If she's terrified, I'm terrified. And so the only way to focus outside the window was to find lightning. So I had to find oh, lightning no. in the distance to just see that I was still in the air. Which was actually kind of sick. I got a video of it. Um, oh my god! But wait, lightning hitting the ground or just lightning just in the cloud striking in general? No, no, no. In, on the ground, like you could see like where it was over a city. Oh, somewhere. lightning strikes! Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. It was actually really cool, and videoing it helped me like focus on like this is a cool video. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not probably my last video ever on my phone when they find me later. <sighs> So did she say it because it was like immediate? Like you had thirty seconds before things hit. Um, it was already hitting kind of rough, and I was actually surprised to see that they were still serving drinks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, right shortly after, it it hit really bad. Like, it, yeah. it was worse than the time when people were bouncing out of their seats. But this time, oh my God. people were, I, I think because of that alarming announcement, yeah. more people were sat more quickly and buckled, so... Um, I don't know oh, if anything okay. happened in the back of the plane, but I yeah. do know that I was lifted from my seat. But thank God for seatbelts. Wear your seatbelt, y'all. Right, it, and 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 it's the people screaming and as well. It's the like it's the it's the people. That... Oh yeah, there were definitely like the oh, like kind of sounds because yeah. nobody wants yeah. to be that person and scream. No, but you can. Oh hear, no, but there's like, people the, that go like the silence. Ah! Ah! Yeah, that's me internally. 
Yeah, and then the kids start crying. Oh, oh yeah, there was a baby crying, but they could have been crying, crying just because of ear popping. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that is that is the, that is nightmare scenario for me. That is possibly my version of hell is just being on yeah. a, uh, on a long haul night flight with a bunch of Horrible. turbulence. Yeah, no. it was long turbulence because oh, it was bad storms God. all across the Midwest. So out of my four and a half hour flight, it was roughly three hours of it. it oh, was, God, it was three hours? Miles. Yes. I felt like I had run five marathons by the time I landed. Yeah. God, I would be I would be I even sweating from husband. every orifice. I would be like completely dead. Oh, you texted your husband? I bought internet to text yeah. him because yeah. I was that terrified that oh. it was gonna go down oh yeah. god and he knows that that's horrifying for me so he's doing his best to like text me back and be like it's okay like just deep breath i'm sure everything's oh, fine wow. and i'm just like no you don't understand eric <laughs> the flight yeah. attendant was terrified yeah. yeah i mean you should fly higher or that there's got to be something they can do at that point i mean i guess they didn't but that uh, they, they did everything they could but like you'd yeah. think that in those kind of situations you'd just be like all right we need to we need to like drop lower or go higher or something to get get or don't like, fly in a storm or don't fly it yeah I like know, that, at that this... point i don't mind having to be delayed a day sure i'll go to sleep yeah. soundly in a hotel and shower instead of yeah. sweating bullets in a plane thinking i'm gonna die well it's the it's the airlines wanting to save money isn't it they're just like we have to get as many planes out there can't afford to can't afford to pay everybody the, to be in a hotel or whatever yeah well that's their their thing though they don't pay for hotels if it's uh weather oriented oh they don't oh, that's well, like the one then... thing because it's so common that they right. put that in their thing of like well if it's delayed because of us that's one thing but if yeah. it's because of rain <laughs> sorry yeah waste of time all right, let's move on to a like a nicer thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let's like answer our, 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 yeah. Let's let's <laughs> let's answer a, a, an advice question. Uh, people Ooh. people that from my Discord and people from my Twitch channel uh, have have submitted questions. Do they know uh, who they're for advice? Asking? No, they have no idea apart from me who they're asking. That's what's That's good amazing. about it. Yeah. Cool. So uh, this is from Sav, and Sav says, "At my job, I really like it. My workers really understand me, and that I have anxiety, and that it's my safe space there." but I haven't been getting many hours and my mum wants me to get another job, but because of my anxiety, I'm too scared to go somewhere else. What do I do? So they love their job. They love their job. They're just Nothing not getting is. enough hours and their mum wants them to go somewhere else, but they have anxiety about going somewhere else because they are, I presume they're worried about the new job not being a safe space for them and, and having yeah, especially the... especially if you love where you're at now. Absolutely. And having um, the new job be like not forgiving or understanding about their anxiety I, that's a tough one that's a tough yeah. position to be in and like i don't want you to take our advice as your yes job to do things yes please. we are not therapists so if you to please take our, our yeah, advice I can only with a grain of salt you, yeah we can only give you what we would do yes kind of this is thing. our take um, yeah i mean i know it's easier said than done but have you tried asking for more hours yeah, that's, that's really the only hours. thing that I can think of. And if they say no, that's where my confidence comes from as an extrovert. Yeah. Worst thing people can usually say is no. Oh, so, yeah, no, I'm not like that at all. See, and I am. <laughs> as <laughs> Which is, is evidenced by the fact that the how scared. Has been fine yeah, that's why, that's why it's been so scary for me to ask my friends to be on this podcast because I am very Aww. scared of, I'm very scared of the no. Um, I would do, what I would do is, uh, do some interviews, get some like job interviews and judge like you haven't got the job until like it's you're not. Wow. Former sentence, Miles, you you're doing great. submitting your application for a job does not mean that you have the job. You, them offering you the job does not mean that you have the job. It's when you decide you want the job. So go for some interviews, see what they're like see what the kind of read with the manager is and at worst they offer the job and you say no that would be yep. my and and i think that that also would then help with the anxiety about going going in and and trying somewhere new is that like that also kind of helps start to work on that anxiety about safer spaces is that like you know maybe you can find maybe you find six places that are terrible but then you know that you've avoided those places and you're in control because that's what anxiety a lot is there's the lack mm -hmm. of control 
So if you feel like you're in control of whether you take the job or not, then that's already, I would say, probably already helping with some of that. Yeah. And if you have a workmate who has potentially gone through the same thing that you feel comfortable around, um, I'm sure you've probably already asked around to those you feel comfortable around about what you should do. Mm. But if they've gone through it, ask ask what they did or what they recommend because they know you better as well. Yeah. They work around you. Yeah. And I think I think I think the pressure from a parent to to go and get another job and stuff like that can be really overwhelming. Um, and it yeah. does come from a pl- I, I imagine from the mum's perspective, it's coming from a place of wanting to motivate you, or wanting to like uh, take care of you because you're not, you know, especially if you're not so getting you're successful. enough. Yeah, so you'd be successful. And I, I, I imagine if you're not getting enough hours at work, it's probably affecting other things in your life. You can't do the things you want to do because you're not getting enough yeah. money. So then, like, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, try to view it like that. It's difficult because parents aren't always the greatest when it comes to communicating their intention Especially behind what they're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. We did the title, Roll Credits. <laughs> I see your segues are so good, Sam. That's amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to take that away from like the. <laughs> no, it's great. No, it's great. Um, but, yeah. So I would. I would no, just. I mean that seriously though about the generation thing. There yeah. is such a gap. I'm. I'm learning how to raise. A and um, actually, I don't want to give you the generation, but yeah. Yeah. My son is not a millennial. <laughs> I'll say that. Yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, yeah. that it's just already so different because we grew up mm. half internet, half not internet. Yeah. And then everything after that is that's all they know. Yeah. Yeah. For so, real. And it is it's completely different. Completely different ball game. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know so, how your relationship is with your your mom. Yeah. So ex- as well. It's it's, it's, it's like, very it's a very personal approach. thing, and we can't we can't we can't like take your side on your mum's side on it i'm sure there's other details that aren't involved but but i think for you sav i think you should be looking to try and get push your boundaries in way that make you still feel in control but like make you feel a little bit uncomfortable and i think yeah. going for job interviews of, even if it's places you you know you aren't going to work at least you're doing the interview and that helps with the anxiety and then hopefully if you do a bunch of them you'll find a place that kind of makes you feel a little bit safe and then, um, and then you've you've got you've got some opportunities there. Maybe you can make some more money. Although I understand not making money because no one's paying anybody at the moment. Job no. market is terrible in every country. So you know, it's not just it's not just you. Um, <sighs> thank thank you, Sam. Thank you for for joining me on the podcast. Of course, this is um, fun. Anytime I get to it, hang out with you is always a good time. Yo, know, you're so sweet. We need to you play Fortnite again, Sue. <laughs> Um, do you have anything that you want to uh, plug? I can't guarantee when this episode will come out, but hopefully if it's something that happens next week, it probably won't be seen. But I can plug something that is long form, I guess. That would be more on top. Whatever um, you want. Well, first and foremost, thank you, Miles, for asking me. I had fun. It, I really had a good time. And I'm glad yeah. that you kind of sort of maybe liked a little bit of the matcha drink. <laughs> I, I liked we'll just it. Just it's just I wished I wished I... I I wished I'd have made it better. For someone that's worked in coffee for ages, I'm I'm ashamed of the way that I made that matcha. Well, coffee's not matcha. This is true, Sam. Yeah. So, so it's a science. You know, we're not yeah. we're not all scientists. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but like me, <laughs> <laughs> mine's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it was delightful. Um. So, but yeah, I am Sam. And you can find me all social medias at just Sam J U S T S E U M. Uh, I am no longer a full time streamer on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Sam S E U M. However, uh, I do stream occasionally, more so in the evenings now. Went from morning streamer now to be a night streamer because <laughs> I have a full time <laughs> job in this economy. <laughs> wild. <laughs> Woof. Exactly. Um, <laughs> real wild. <laughs> But I stream on Tuesdays over on Twitch.tv slash Wounded Word Project. And for our, it's a long form campaign, but it's also seasonal. It's called Eden Falls. It is a charity TTRPG where donations affect our game life. And wow. 
yeah, it's re- it's really really nice actually. Mm. Um, we have <laughs> it'll be way after this episode comes out, but next week is the penultimate <laughs> episode of season yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and it's Tuesdays, one p.m. PT, four p.m. Eastern. There is an incredible cast and crew over there, but that'll also be. I don't know, like the next release date, like two months. You know, if you hear this in like two months, check mm-hmm. it out on Tuesdays. Also, you can check out the collections or the vods because I have them all nightly tucked under, or they're also on my YouTube for the edited down, non weird break chatty parts. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then Fridays, <laughs> also on Twitch TV slash Wounded Warrior Project, you can catch me and my partner in crime, JJ, hosting for our weekly jam with JJ and Sam, where we bring on guests and have them you know tell us about what they do and maybe their warrior stories or pick a game for us to play i learned how to play league of legends because of one of our government affairs warriors who works yeah. for wwp who was um severed from the military back in i don't want to butcher his year but uh, many years ago due to uh being injured mm. in iraq and mm. so he used to play a lot of halo on the xbox however it's not as much of an option anymore because he is missing an arm. Mm. So the game that he recommended to us was League of Legends because League of Legends was his way to learn how to play games again. And he was able to get a mouse that had like 12 buttons on the side so he could <gasps> use that yes. as his way to play. Yeah, That's so it's so a really cool. cool learning thing of like, oh God, I've never played League. Why did you choose this? And then he tells us and it's like, oh, that is something someone who is evil would mm. not think of. Mm -hmm. um and not everybody is stories like that but they're cool stories so if you ever want to come check it out please do but yes oh thank you sam all right we'll be back next week bye bye thank you very much for listening and uh subscribe to the channel if you're on youtube and follow us on spotify and all those things if you're not on the youtube and uh be back next week bye